Awesome, Azul Kellum, how are you doing? Can you hear me? What's up, Gray? Yeah, can you hear you? Can you hear me? Yeah, I've got you, I've got you. How are you doing? Perfect, like in yourself, man. I'm good, thanks. Yeah, yes, yeah, thanks so much for taking the time out of your day. I know you're a busy man. Um, I really appreciate it. Such a pleasure. Such a cool, awesome. such an honor. Yeah, <laughs> no, hopefully, hopefully. Um, but yeah, how, how you been doing? I'm pretty sure you guys are, are extremely busy and uh, excited for, for what's ahead. Yeah, things things have been pretty crazy. Um, yeah, I've been trying to balance everything out. So the training's obviously been quite the focus at the moment. Been up and down to steadies every, pretty much every weekend. Um, we've been training really yeah. hard. Yeah, uh, so has been co- uh, coaching for us and programming for us quite a bit. Um, and then uh, four of us are training late on Friday evening, early Saturday morning, Saturday throughout most of the day, and Sunday again. Uh, just trying to get in the teamwork. Got yeah. a worm going, got like a lot of team workouts, trying to find some old stuff from the game that we think might come up again. Uh, trying to look at some of the semis and see see what looked like it was an interesting challenge, things that we might yeah. need some work on. So, yeah, it's been, been interesting, been good, bro. Yeah, that's actually something I wanted to ask you. Like, So obviously there's a lot of unknown at the game. So you said you guys have got a worm going. That's obviously a big thing that come up uh, that comes up in the in the team competition. So like, how have you guys sort of uh, prepped yourself for, for this unknown element? Um, yeah, so we kind of, uh, Scylla and Elsha were, were nice enough to, to try and put something together for us. Uh, the kind of funny thing was, is the worm's kind of like, obviously like for four people like pretty long um and there's like almost like stops in between the weights that make sure that the weights are kind of distributed evenly um yeah. which which they hadn't put in so our, our first few our first session with the worm was without stops so, i mean we do a clean and jerk and half the weight shifts onto nadine's shoulders because yak is like this big and she's like this big so it's like coming down onto her. um but we we put in some put in some stops and try to make try to make do um, yeah. So, so we're going to keep using it for the next two weeks and hopefully get a bit of practice in with it. I've um, been using the sandbags quite a bit because yeah, okay. obviously that is something I expect to see. No, I expect to see that uh, the big bob, um, which is like a massive sled that the kind of originally six people push now that the yeah. teams of four, the four people push. Um, okay. They've just released that individual event with the long swim, long paddle. Expecting to see yeah. something like that. So, uh, been heading down to Blomhof Pool. Um, Okay. Pulling off the covers early on a Saturday and doing some swimming. Yeah, I, I've been doing a bit of coaching, swim coaching, which I haven't had to do in ages. Um, <laughs> I, I must say, I'm very keen for um, hopefully a paddle. Uh, after I did life saving as a kid, so okay, like a, Plus, board paddle. Yeah, it would be really, really cool. I think I'd enjoy that. Yeah, no, that's that's interesting. And like you, you just said, so so you obviously don't live in Stellies, or or do you? Um, no, yeah, I've, I've moved down to Cape Town uh, with my girlfriend. Uh, okay. So, so, so yeah, I'm w- busy working full time, studying part time, and training part time. It's been been quite a bit. Yeah, that was that was actually my my first question. Um, like, how are you handling that work life train social balance? I mean, it's it must be hectic. I know, like a lot of the games athletes, they uh, I mean, this is their full time job, and obviously, you this is CrossFit isn't your full time job. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's been it's been interesting. It's been it's been good so far. I think I'm somewhat used to it because of um, like studying, like you know, studying yeah. and and training at the same time and trying to coach a little bit. Um, but it's definitely been a step up to have like eight to five. There's like there's no chance to go fit in an hour somewhere. You know, if you have like a few hours yeah. in between lectures, you can go fit in a session or whatever it is. Exactly. Um, yeah. so that's def- definitely been an adjustment. I've also never really been a like a late training person, like I like to, to yeah. get it done in the mornings or whatever it is. So, like getting to the gym at Opus Five and staying there till seven, seven thirty isn't yeah isn't too much bad. Um, but yeah, it's just the price of admission. I've enjoyed the gym that I'm at um, at the moment a lot. Um, and yeah, my girlfriend Belinda has been really helpful in terms of yeah. making sure that there's like good food ready when I'm home and that yeah. kind of stuff. So. No, it's nice to have a have a good support structure at home. Oh, exactly, all the support structure. No, awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so so that that brings me to my next question, and obviously you guys have proven it. So it's sort of just you confirming my my question. So do you believe it's actually possible to 
be a competitive CrossFit athlete, even though it's not your, your full-time job? I Look, I think it's, it's like a dying breed, I guess I'd say. Um, I think, obviously, being an African continent that hasn't professionalized as CrossFit as much, unfortunately, um, yeah. it's, a, it's, a little bit, uh, it's a little bit more accepting like, to obviously be, to be working and training because that's what everyone is doing. Because, um, unfortunately, there's just like, you know, you hear stories of Mac Fraser, even when he was a rookie, um, he'd go to this comp on the weekend and win $1,000, you know? Yeah. <laughs> that, that's like the most money you're going to win at a South African comp. Yeah. if you're lucky like to find in a few years you know um so yeah it's just it kind of just is what it is i think it's it's still possible um hopefully it becomes less and less possible obviously you want to see the sport grow as much as possible yeah. and, um obviously the people in america and um canada and uh, europe a little bit are, yeah. are starting to be paid properly I, i'm a big fan of bed bergeron he's definitely one of my idols yeah. um so seeing that comp train academy and seeing people get like insurance and healthcare and an actual salary for just like going in and putting yeah. in the graph you're expected to put in like that's yeah that's really cool and that's a lot more stable as well it's not like yeah if you win then you'll be you'll be able to make yeah. a living otherwise not so much you know yeah but i think i think that's it's because the sport is so new and especially in in africa like it's it's not a viable career option at the moment unfortunately um but like, like you said like hopefully the the sport grows over the next few years um, sure. Yeah. So, so the other one, other thing is like, obviously your team, and like, correct me if I'm wrong, but you guys were the only team coming out of the semifinals who literally won every single event. Um, so that must give you guys some confidence, not to only you know pitch up to the games, but actually get there and and be able to compete. Yeah, I think I think that's what. Um, if anything on this journey, I think. Uh, during like the actual CrossFit season from when the Open started is something that I realized that we really want to do is the kind of the goal was always the CrossFit Games. And then it was like, we'll just go there and have fun, you know. And and as it's kind of gone on, it's been like, yeah, we want to go have fun. And obviously, like, this is dreams come true. But, but we want to go and compete. We don't want to be like a, I like to say, we don't want to be like a tick box, you know. Like, yep, we yeah. had an African team here. Like, yeah, like, that's what we have to do. We want, like, you know, some teams to take notice and, and to try and compete. And I think the same semis gave us confidence i think the quarters in a large way gave us confidence because we were able to see how we ranked to the rich phonings and the best of the world and yeah. you know we we placed placed pretty solidly in some of them we, we got a pretty bumming yeah. penalty in event one that dropped us a little bit um and it was like it wasn't a penalty for like it was a penalty for form where it's like easily fix, fixable you know it's not like we like half yeah. thing ghds or, or like not touching the top of a rope while ropes a meter high or whatever it's like but yeah. the girls like their hips just needed to be a little bit like close uh, away further away from the wall on the handstand yeah up. so it's like yeah so, so it's just a small thing yeah yeah i think it finished like i don't know it's somewhere around the 20s 21st 19th somewhere on yeah. there uh that's amazing which yeah definitely provided some confidence and like yeah that, that that's also like yeah, definitely. I think that's also like that mind shift. Like, how, did, how have you guys approached that mind shift? I mean, you guys, you mentioned guys like Rich Froning, and obviously these are guys most new CrossFitters look up to. And like, how have you made that mind shift from you know looking up to this guy to being listen? I'm actually going to compete against this guy. He's not no longer an idol. He's a competitor. Like, how have you managed that mind shift? I mean, yeah. Like I said, I think I think there's a lot riding on. On being the only African team, so I think that that's driving a lot of the uh, like the motivation. It's 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 important that, that we go and represent like a continent that wants the sport to grow. Yeah. And it may not be like ninety percent of the pop continent probably doesn't know what on earth CrossFit is, and another nine yeah. percent probably doesn't care about it. But the one yeah. percent of people that are watching from Africa, like we want to try and make sure we're representing our continent. They're going, yeah, yeah. like I want to get there one day. Um, so, so yeah, just doing our best job to. Yeah. To now that's awesome, and I mean, we'll all be cheering you guys on. So. Um, yeah. So, so you you guys have obviously been doing CrossFit for a while as individuals. Um, like, what made you decide to? I mean, there has to be something special about this team. I mean, um, I think Mariska came first in Africa in the Open, and yet she still decided to 
to commit to the team and, and rather pursue the competition as a team. So, like, what made you guys decide to rather compete as a team? Um, yeah, I, I, whenever I get asked, like, when it all started, when the Mighty Oaks kind of, like, decided that this was a goal, uh, I just think back to the day when it was uh, 2019 Fittis and Cape Town qualifiers. And um, Yaku had just been come back from Amman in, in the Middle East. Um, he was working over there and he'd just come back and he was doing he was doing one of the qualifiers, which is a it was a dumbbell ring muscle up workout. But then it went into one at Max Snatch, and Yaku loves the barbell. Um, so I just remember walking in and and watching him start snatching like one ten go up easy and one twenty go up easy and one twenty five go up, and I was like, shit, like that was really impressive. And uh, Silla was yeah. there as well. He kind of like stepped over to me and said, "You, him, Mariska Nadine." And I was like, "Yeah, that, like." I felt a bit out of my depth, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Like, Nadine and Mariska, and this guy looked pretty unreal. Um, I started to take shape from there, and the, the goal was to, to try and give it a go in 2020. Um, and obviously, that was going to happen later on in the year, and then COVID hit, and um, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. So it was actually kind of fortunate it gave us some more time to prep, and more time to yeah. to work on our weaknesses and, and really bring it all together. Um, yeah, which is pretty stoked about yeah, able to do, well, pretty humble. Yeah. Well, you've obviously smoothed out all your weaknesses. And I think what's, what stands out about your team is like, like you mentioned, like Yaku loves the barbell. And I think you guys play off each, each other's strengths quite nicely. I mean, you're obviously a, a wizard on the gymnastics. So I think that's what makes your team so, such a strong competition. Like you, you guys play off each other's strengths and weaknesses nicely. Um, yeah, I, I, hope, I hope so. Yeah, I think like our, Yaku and I's goal has always been to to rely on each other less you know I don't want to yeah. have to rely on him for maybe squat clean as, as often as possible True. and he doesn't rely on me so that's like both just like trying to fix the weaknesses and yeah. level them out yeah. yeah but yeah so so like how's your how's your training changed and has it changed ever since qualifying like obviously the, it, you, you guys you mentioned you guys are prepping for, for the worm and the sleds and stuff like that but overall, your, your training structure, has the volume increased? Have you guys changed the, the programming ever since you've qualified or not really? Um, I think after quarterfinals, it really started it started to look fairly similar. I mean, for us in Cape Town, we knew we could, we didn't know we were going to be all indoors. Like there was still some uncertainty and then like a stricter, stricter level hit. So I think that's why we stayed all indoors. But we thought we could be swimming at fittest. We could be running at fittest. We could be doing all these kind of things. So... It's looked fairly similar yeah. since then. Um, the weeks are a lot more chilled and the weekends are kind of like mini comp weekends, like pretty much yeah. most weekends, um, really designing the workouts to make sure that, yeah, in, in two weeks' time when you're like standing on the stage, like this is this could be the workout that you see. You never know. Yeah. Um, as opposed to like long back squat sets and, and less, yeah. less um, fun workouts. So it's been fun to do the sexy stuff, I guess. Yeah. I can imagine. Like that, that's also like, what's been your favorite workout throughout the open quarterfinals, semifinals? What's your What's been your favorite workout? Um, sure. Putting you on the spot, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm tempted to say the one where Yaku had to do all the cleans, and I just did double unders. But I think, I think my favorite one was um, the quarterfinal pistol workout with the GHGs and rope climbs. That's just yeah. like. Yeah, I, like those are three of the movements I definitely choose for myself. And uh, Mariska and I did the pistols together, and it was just like, you know, we had just watched the team before go, and we'd w seen some teams do it. And like, pistols are a difficult movement, but they they come fairly naturally to me. And I think Mariska was born doing pistols, so yeah. um, they definitely come very naturally to her. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Um, obviously, last week the the president sort of put the country back in a semi lockdown has the closing of the gyms affected you guys at all or do you guys have at least access to everything you need yeah it's it's been a tricky time because we've also been trying to make sure that we can get into the u.s um because yeah they, they've got a ban on south africa and most of europe um they've been posting a bit about it on the morning chalk up and those kind of things so we actually heard last week wednesday that we got the national interest exemption to actually get into the u.s which is massive for us like i mean yeah, yeah it's like the difference between going, between going and yeah exactly uh, so 
so that was cool in terms of like training so far um we're lucky to have one or two people that own garage gyms that are that are willing to let us go there we we, we popped okay. into one of the the mighty oak legends uh, his name is carl his his place and we hopped on his air runner and, and used a bit of that equipment the other day which is yeah that oh, was cool it's it's good to know a lot of people <laughs> it's all about net- yeah, networking sure, um <laughs> Yeah, so so what are some of the like sacrifices and lifestyle changes you've had to make um you know to reach this goal? Obviously this is everyone's goal. Okay, maybe not everyone, but most of competitive athletes goal is to go to the games. And obviously you've had to make some sacrifices and lifestyle changes. Um what are what are some of those? Um yeah, I I think I've been incredibly fortunate to to grow up in kind of the the environment that I have. My parents have been like incredibly supportive like I've tried a lot of different sports in my life and anything. It's like, yeah, I'll go for it. We back you. Um, yeah, my girlfriend's been really supportive. I mean, I like, I come home after, I mean, my day kind of looks like wake up, study, work eight to five and then go train for two hours. I, I can't imagine what it is on the I am when I get home, um, but she still seems to, to love me, which I really appreciate. Um, in terms of like long-term stuff, it's been, I, I've never been much of like a big party jawler kind of uh, person. Yeah. So, so yeah. that that was a bit of a sacrifice. Well, like it wasn't too much of a sacrifice, I think, but um, that was something that I did a little bit less of in uni and that kind of stuff yeah. too, to try and make sure that that it gets put in. And yeah, other than that, it's it's just been time in the gym. Just uh, I've always been a smaller guy, so eating calories was like always the the target. Um, sometimes it doesn't matter how healthy or unhealthy they are, <laughs> so that's that's okay. Um, yeah, just just discipline in the gym, a lot of squat cycles, um, trying to pay for for supplements and and gym memberships through coaching, that kind of stuff, definitely. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I really just love it. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to think of like some hectic sacrifice. Uh, I don't yeah. think I've been in a position where I've had to make that. Um, and I think I've just like, to be honest, a lot of them haven't really seen like sacrifices. I just that's yeah. what I wanted to do, you know. Part of life, yeah. No, that's awesome. It's that's I think that's. It's lucky in such a, a privileged situation. I mean, that's that's awesome, and it's obviously paid off. I mean, you you've reached the goal most of us look forward to or, or dream of, and that's that's amazing. Um, what what are some of the things like you you look most forward to at the games? Like, obviously, you'll you'll meet a lot of different people. It'll be an awesome experience. So, what's the thing you look forward to most going there? Um, so quite a little bit off the ga- the topic of the games, but onto to the US. Um, Something that, that that you're wearing at the moment is I'm a big NFL fan. So last year, when <laughs> I, two, two, two years ago, when I went on exchange, I went on exchange to Canada, and I was like, should I shouldn't I get a jersey or whatever it is? And I got home, and I was like so disappointed that I hadn't. So it's definitely something I'm going to be getting when, when I'm in the US. Is is an NFL jersey? I'm a big Kansas City fan. Um, okay. So that's gonna be, that's gonna. No, that's be, awesome. Um, <laughs> The actual games, I mean, I'm just looking forward to, to trying to take in every moment. Um, yeah. yeah, it's it is going to be a lot of fun, and it's just yeah, I'm just looking forward to taking it all in and yeah. and looking at these like I think I'll be a bit starstruck for maybe registration day and that kind of stuff. But looking forward to competing. Yeah. I mean, it's been one of my life goals for, for quite some time. So um, going in there, giving it my all, uh, making sure that like. If this is the only time I'm going to go to the games, I'm going to make sure it's worth it, you know. And then the yeah. other thing I'm definitely looking forward to is there's a scene in one of the old CrossFit games where Matt Fraser has like, it's one of the years, I think it's like 2016. He has like a sun hat in every single like scene where Dave Castro is briefing them. And I see Noble have a have a cool sun hat that I'm definitely going to be getting and just sporting nonstop. So awesome merch, yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> No, that, no, that's. Awesome. I think I'd prefer like so, some David's daughter nobles, like with David's daughter at the bottom, than like just classics or with my name or something. I'd rather get captured. Yeah. Them. So, so like I haven't been following CrossFit that long, but like from last year or the previous year's games, like I always see the athletes getting getting like cool merch with their names on and stuff. I mean, that's got to be something to look forward to, like getting getting a jersey with your name on the back or something like that. Oh, yeah, for sure. I think. Hopefully, hopefully we get an event that's like right up our alley first off, and we can like get a leaders jersey or something like that. That would be so cool. <laughs> like, I think that's that's big dreaming, but I mean, we'll see what happens. 
Well, I mean, you, you've made it this far, and I mean, this is, it's, you guys obviously are there to compete, so we'll all be rooting for you. <laughs> um, what, do you what would you say is your, is your biggest obstacle still lying ahead? I'm, I know you mentioned you guys are struggling to get into the U.S. Um, well, what would you say is that your biggest obstacle before the games actually start? Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's obviously not cheap to go to the games, so I think raising funds has been like, kind of one of the one of the focuses of the team um just to make sure that you know it's it's an experience that we're not going to get back and and suffer for yeah. months or whatever yeah. it is and um yeah Mariska and Yaku don't have visas yet so this national interest exemption you need that plus the visa to go through so they've now been granted interviews based off the fact that they have this national interest exemption so provided yeah. that they that they get those uh, that interview yeah. goes well tomorrow I think that's, that's on my mind quite a bit at the moment as soon as that's yeah. done we, I mean we still haven't booked tickets because we're waiting to make sure they get visas um, but as yeah. soon as that's done then yeah, yeah. I mean it, it's it's around the corner I mean you guys it's, I think it's three four weeks before before the game starts so I mean it's got to put some pressure on you guys but I, I mean we're all hoping you guys um, yeah get it, get all your admin stuff sorted out um, I know someone mentioned you guys I don't know if it's a fund me or, or some way like anyone can donate to it um is is there a way we can help you or support you guys financially in any way? Yeah, but we've got a like a GoFundMe page at the moment. Um, I actually need to add it onto my Instagram bio, but it's all over Facebook from from myself and the rest of the members. It's on the CrossFit X that page. It's uh, I think it's on their bio. Um, so yeah, it's just like a, a GoFundMe page yeah. where we're just trying to raise some funds and and trying to yeah make sure it doesn't hurt the pockets too much. Yeah, uh, no, definitely, and I think it's yeah. it's. Like like you said, you guys are, are not only representing yourselves, you're representing the country in a, in a growing sport. Um, and I think it's it's one of the things I, I love about the CrossFit community is the support. Um, and like hopefully we can all help you guys out and, and you know see you guys represent Africa at the CrossFit Games, which is obviously a massive goal for you guys. Oh, sure, thanks, bro. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, so so then my my girlfriend was the one who who sort of uh, helped me put together all these questions, and she said we we have to have a quick fire round where I just pop you random questions, and you just yeah I don't know pop the first thing that comes into your mind. It's it's nothing too hectic, so so the, yeah, let, let's see how it goes. Okay, so she she put here yeah. uh, thrusters versus burpees. Oh, burpees definitely. Even I like both, but definitely burpees. Okay, cool. Uh, snatch versus clean and jerk. Yo, um, probably clean and jerk. Gotta go with the clean yeah. and jerk. Okay. Um, cardio versus going one rep max. Yo, for entertainment, one rep max. But if you're asking me to put points on the board, I'm definitely going to choose the longer event. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, oats versus bacon and eggs for breakfast. Uh, I've got to go, like, it, it used to be an oats person, but ever since we've started, there's a, a place called Jack's Bagel that's open in Steady's, and that's oh. got a ki- killer bacon and egg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so we've got, a, we've got a Jack's Bagels here in PE as well, and yeah, it's, it's a nice treat. <laughs> it's fire. Um, running versus rowing? Ah, uh, running, hands down. Really? No, I, I hate yeah. running, like... Yeah. I've always blamed it on my short legs, but like, I don't know. I just can't run quickly. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, lastly, Nike versus Reebok. Oh, I'm, I'm a big Nike fan. Like, <laughs> since I, ever since, I know he's a bit controversial, but my dad's a big golfer. So Tiger Woods is like, who I grew yeah. up with is partly a hero. I love the last dance. I love Michael. Matt's a big hero. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely a Nike fan. No, same. I'm also I'm also yeah. team Nike all the way. Although I might have to uh, save some money to buy myself a pair of Nobles ever since they became the title sponsor. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh. <laughs> awesome, awesome, Callum. Thanks so much for doing this. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to to have this chat. Yeah, such a pleasure, man. Any time. Yeah, yeah. And and really good luck. Li- Sorry. Are you gonna? I don't know if I just ruined the interview, but I want to ask how you doing. <laughs> no, no, not at all. No, I'm doing well. Like, uh, it's a bit all over the place at the moment. So, like, I, I started my new job in Joburg in Feb, and then sort of everything's changed. And like, 
article yesterday I heard I got a so I got a secondment to the UK but because South Africa's on the UK's like uh, travel ban list like I can't go to the UK so like I'll be working for the UK remotely which is a bit disappointing like I'll I'll probably move back home to PE and uh like it's it's it just feels like it's a it's a missed opportunity like I had this chance to go there and and now because of you know the way things are I'll be sitting at home um yeah. oh, other than that like it's it's been very chill like I've because I've been traveling around so much it's been difficult to find like a a place to train and like follow a dedicated program so i'm just you know like bouncing between gyms and, and doing what i can um but it's a, it's a bit frustrating because you can't really get into a rhythm and a and a like solid program to to work towards something because you keep on jumping between places um yeah. but yeah like I'm, I'm enjoying the the training at the moment and like i'm i'm enjoying you know editing these videos and, and posting them online so at least it's something to keep me busy <laughs> sure it's very cool Oh, thanks for having me. Yeah. I really appreciate it. No, awesome. Th- thanks so much, Callum, and, and really good luck for the games. We'll all be cheering for you guys, and then yeah, hopefully, hopefully you, you guys uh, come back smiling. Hey, have a yeah, good evening. Thanks so much, Callum. Cheers. Uh. Yeah.